Good morning, folks. Beautiful footage of the Gold Coast down under when the heavens decided to make it just a little more beautiful. Fireball breaking up over the waters there. We've got space weather, earthquakes, storm alerts, amazing space news, and another conference video is up and posted for you here on YouTube. But let's begin with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. And find the last 24 hours, apart from the dark coronal holes facing Earth, the activity should be most discernible on the left side, the incoming eastern limb. The sunspot just over the limb on the north is beginning to let loose, already dinging the X-ray flux with solar flare energy in moderate range, and we're going to see plasma movement driven by that active region here in 304 angstroms. They are coming into view right now. Solar wind here at Earth sputtered out after the brief intensification yesterday and Earth's magnetic shield is calm and quiet. We're well in the safe zone. The solar wind should continue to intensify, however, due to more streams from these coronal holes here. Got days and days of it, it looks like. And that's also a third of an earthquake alert. The IMF from the coronal holes will match up with CME coupling from ones leaving our star the last two days. And to complete the trifecta, do you see what my cursor is tracking? moving faster than all the background stars. That's Mercury. It is time once again for a solar conjunction in the first few days of the week here, and together, those three have seismicity set to surge. We've already had Chile rumble, and a very rare, maybe once or twice a year type event, struck Barbuda last night. Now, it wasn't magnitude 6, so it cannot count for the forecasting model, but its rarity, combined with only the second ever red alert for the Caribbean, is something you can learn to use. Tons of blood echoes in the region, and the intertropical convergence was just a stride in Colombia. On to our top stories. So folks, this is the TRAPPIST system, and we're back for an update. The Discovery paper has now been supplemented with the 72-day observations from K2, and we now have a much better idea about the eccentricity, orbital distance, and actual mass of the seven dwarf planets. So the link is below, and you can check out the details. I realize they're probably difficult to see, but real quick, every planet mass was revised downward except for planet C. That was revised to be a bit bigger. The rest appear even more dwarfly than we originally thought. And we also have solid temperature readings from the surfaces. Now you might remember I'm most focused on life potential under the ice of planet H. But now they are saying that planet E would be like living on the Antarctic coast all the time, which is technically survivable. And get this, planet D equilibrium thermal range is about room temperature. That's as cool as it gets, well, figuratively, not literally. Let's let our imaginations keep flying, as here's what Ivy League professors do with their free time. Hypothesize how to send spacecraft across the stars at relativistic speeds using solar sails and lasers. We also have an article on surface features indicating active cryovolcanism on Europa. We just heard that hydrogen life ingredients were found there and on Enceladus, and now we have apparent confirmation of the geological activity below the ice. Yesterday, we posted Dr. Dunning's talk from Observing the Frontier 2017. The visiting professor at Caltech is quite the soldier in this community taking on GMOs, sugar, vaccines, and the elites who try to shove them down our throats. Some of that actually is literal. His talk is called Habitat Crisis, and you can find it here on our channel posted yesterday. United States. Still going to have lingering showers across that same weak convergence line, but by tomorrow another system will have moved over the Rockies and into the upper Midwest. Our other top note today is for Japan. They're about to have a typhoon sneak up on them from the Korean Peninsula. Hello. Small alert for Greece coming up as well. For those who forgot, David from Adapt 2030 was on the last fly on the wall this weekend. And you guys got a bomb of a deeper look episode dropped on you last night as well. We've got more wind maps and an atmospheric chemistry run from Null School, followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again right here tomorrow. It's 5.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.